excited for this. This is my brand new to me 2021 Ranger trimmer that I bought off Copart for just 1100 or sorry, not 1100 $11,700. So I'm stoked on it. Let me walk you around it. All right, how good does this look? I personally love the way that this is looking like it changed so much with the fender flares and the wheels and tires and then just a one inch level kit i really really like the way that this truck is looking so give you a little status update last time i spun around the truck um it was just got home from the insurance auction i repaired the frame put the bed back on put the stock wheels and tires on and that was kind of it so after that I got wheels and tires, um, Nomad wheels and Firestone tires. You guys know that those are both big sponsors of mine and I personally, my favorite aesthetic look for a tire and wheel. And I think this wheel combo, wheel tire combo looks like absolutely perfect for this truck. This is the Firestone MT2 <clears throat> in the same size that I run on my Tacoma, which is the 285-75 R16 basically a 33. Um, cool thing about putting it on the Ranger, no need to re-gear with that 10-speed transmission. You didn't notice a single difference. And uh, so 285, 75R16s on 16 by eight um, negative 10 offset wheels. So wheels and tires are on there, frame is repaired. And then I got fender flares. Fender flares are a big deal on these trucks for me I feel like because they really add a lot to the truck the Rangers I feel like are kind of flat on the sides um, but the flare just adds that extra kind of muscular look and I really like the way that they look on trucks I know flares can be kind of a polarizing option some people take them off I personally really like flares but these are the EGR rugged flare and EGR USA makes a bunch of different truck accessories. And um, when I was looking at flares, there's a whole different, there's a whole bunch of people who make flares, but there wasn't a ton of info out there. And one of the things I discovered in my searching was that EGR makes one of the only flares that one has this much tire coverage, which I think is an extra two inches, but does not go up the side of the truck really high so bushwhacker also makes flares and i almost bought theirs but their flare comes up to here pretty much it's another inch and a half or two inches higher it doesn't give you any more room under the wheel well it doesn't like cut the wheel well out but it just comes up higher on the truck and that ends up making the, the wheel well tire arch wheel arch area look bigger and makes the tires look smaller so for me these ones which are the egr rugged style flares are the perfect flare in my opinion for this truck they look like a factory option that kind of looks like the ones that come on the f-150 raptor so those are the flares really happy with them and then <clears throat> for the suspension since it is a trimmer it came with the fox 2.0 from the factory which ride really really nice all i did was add a one inch strut spacer so it's actually it's literally uh or actually you know it's is it one inch I think it's one inch. It might be half an inch. No, it's a half inch. It's a half inch tall spacer, which is just two pieces of quarter inch steel laser cut, and they just go on top of the strut in between the strut and the strut mount. So basically just pushes the, the shock down a uh, half an inch, and that gives you one inch more lift. Because this is the trimmer, trimmers are already an inch higher in the front than the factory uh, Rangers non-trimmer rangers so i actually had put a two inch spacer or one inch spacer that gave you two inches lift and it made it perfectly level but i didn't really like the look uh personally and i want a little bit of rake just because i just think the look looks better uh like proportions and just stance of the truck it looked too high in the front so trimmer with a one inch level kit perfect in my opinion okay still haven't fixed the headlight headlight works perfectly fine um obviously hit something with this before i bought it and cracked it <clears throat> i bought another headlight on ebay for 150 dollars that has a clear lens but broken tabs 
and my thought was, oh, I'm gonna take that lens, bake it in the oven, open it up, transfer it, because that's something you could do. I've done it on my last track with the Toyota, but I could not get that lens off. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I might use that other headlight completely and try and fix the tabs because that's the broken part on the other headlight. But the Lariat trucks come with LED projector headlights that are really, really good already from the factory. Otherwise I would just, you know, oh, I'll just upgrade to some other brand of headlights that uh, are LED projectors, but the factory ones are actually super nice. So I'm not totally sure yet. <clears throat> I'd kind of like to get rid of this Chrome. Um, but again, this headlight is super hard to open up. So if you know someone who has factory headlights and was able to open them up, let me know. <laughs> or if you know someone who makes a quality factory quality headlight, uh, like up to quality, up to factory quality, let me know. I like the ones my dad has on his truck, um, which are like the Mustang style ones. I think it looks really good, but I'm not sure if I want to swap those out yet. Okay. Other thing I did, Ford Performance Front Grille, which again, another polarizing option, but I really like the Ford grill like this, um, just all black. And to me, it looks like the F-150 Raptor again, kind of that look. My dad has the Mustang headlights, <clears throat> style headlights, and he also has EGR flares. And all together, the front of it looks super good. I know I'm missing one flare. <laughs> I didn't attach it correctly right after I got it and lost it on the freeway on my way to the airport to drive the 2024 Ranger. So I couldn't go back and get it, but that's on the way. I've got another one coming, but yeah, Ford Performance Grill, that I got on their website during the holidays and actually got a great discount just through their website. I think it was only 220 bucks shipped. So swapped that out. I like the clean look, no more trimmer-esque stuff with like the red lines and whatever. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just move on along. The body is in great shape, which is really nice. No major dents or dings. Not perfect. There's a couple little spots here and there with like nicks and uh, little things like this kind of around. But that's honestly peace of mind for me because I want to be able to just drive through the bushes and not care, care so much about like ruining perfect paint. So that's totally fine with me. Uh, truck body itself is actually in really good shape on the outside with the exclusion of this, which I actually used, <laughs> I think I used just like a piece of wood in the inside to pop this out a little bit. And I messed it up the paint, you know, the body by pressing like in, in like a, a direct point and kind of crack some stuff. But you guys know I'm not keeping the truck bed on here. I'm going to make my own flatbed. So this was just to get it good enough. And you know what, I think I'm going to actually just spray this white with some white spray paint until this comes off for the flatbed. Um, yeah, that's pretty much, oh, the taillights got super lucky. If you guys are looking to buy a truck that's been in an accident, that's been rear-ended, try and find one that has intact taillights because these are $900 a piece. I was very lucky that the one that I found, uh, the tail lights are intact and I don't have to replace them. Looks like this is a scratch, but it's not, not a crack. So yeah, I guess I'll spin around. Oh, the rear bumper. <clears throat> if I was to keep the truck, I'd have to replace that rear bumper probably. It's bent down. I think what happened is actually when it got rear ended, it actually just got hit right on the trailer hitch because the rest of everything is in great shape but the trailer hitch itself is what got bent down and you can see it's actually contacting the rear tire there. Other than that, <clears throat> it didn't get hit like in the tailgate, which is wild. <laughs> but yeah, that's how she sits on the outside now. I feel like a major improvement in aesthetics. I love the way this is looking. Like I said, I think I would just leave it like this if I wasn't going to do a flatbed, but I think it's gonna look really good with a flatbed too. So let's go inside. All right, let's get inside here and hopefully again, wind noise isn't an issue, but interior cleaned up really nice. And I'm actually really happy with just the interior and comfort of this truck. It has the Lariat seats. I don't know if these are actually trimmer, obviously trimmer specific seats, but I don't know if you can get this two type of leather in just the regular Lariat, but it's super comfortable. I really like how this 
kind of Alcantara leather is like soft, almost like um, almost like a fabric seat, which are really comfortable. But it's also got the leather, which is easy to clean and just feels more luxurious. I really, really like sitting in these seats. Um, I have those Mercedes seats in my Tacoma, and I think these are my preference. These are also heated, um, so I've been really happy with that. I got Husky floor liners, which look really dirty right now, but when they're clean, they look awesome. Um, fresh floor mats make a big difference in a truck, in any car. <clears throat> I'll close this so we don't have a bunch of wind noise, but the truck also has keyless start, which is really nice. First car I've had that has had keyless start. Um, and I actually really like that. One of the biggest things you're going to notice, of course, is the screen. I changed the screen out, which I really, really like this screen. This is from Linkswell, and they sent that out after I asked for it, and it has CarPlay. I don't, I don't know if running the camera on the phone and also running the CarPlay is going to have some type of issue, so this might, the screen might not react 100% the way it should, but yeah, I don't think it'll let you, well, maybe... Anyways, this screen is awesome. I am really, really happy with this update to the truck. Um, just makes it feel so much more modern than that little screen. It fits really nice. It comes with all the trim needed to fit this looking factory. So it just looks like a factory option. And actually the new 2024 Rangers all have that screen or most all of them have that screen in all the trim levels and having just been in those out in utah coming back it makes my truck feel 99 percent just like the brand new ranger because that's like one of the biggest changes but this has everything carplay um apple carplay has everything you're familiar with with carplay has all your apps i'll be able to run onyx off road spotify google maps um do your messages phone calls all that kind of stuff and then you can split up the screen it also has all your climate controls down here digital buttons but also physical buttons so this turns on and off the climate uh, like the, the air and then this changes the fan speed and then these guys change the temperature. So without having to go into these uh, like digital buttons, you can turn on and off your air, turn up the fan, turn up the heat, which is a big deal <clears throat> when you go full digital touchscreen. It, it can be annoying to not have any physical buttons, but this screen actually has physical buttons for the volume, change the tracks, and also the climate control. So very happy that they decided to retain that. And then um the lower bar here changes to black when it's night like i just turned on the headlights goes to dim mode and then that bar goes to black so everything matches and then if you want you can actually just turn the whole screen off right here with two taps and then it's fully black so at night there's no extra light coming off of that really really happy with this screen i'm gonna do another video of like a little bit of install and more details just on the screen but um yeah that's the screen, it's by Linkswell. And then another thing I really like about the trimmer, another thing I really like about the trimmer is these auxiliary switches. It's already got six of them built in with, you know, you got your switches up here, but then in the engine bay, it already has its own fuse box and relay setup. So you can just plug in your accessory lights. Like I'm gonna do uh, air compressor. Um, I'll probably do like rock lights and hopefully a front locker, like an e-locker. And then I have three others that I don't know what I'll end up using them for, but having that built in and just a really clean factory look, really like that. So these Rangers come with a rear locker from the factory, traction control on off, it has the auto start on off, it has parking sensors, it has trailer mode, and it has um, terrain cruise control basically, or crawl control. You can press this and then set the desired speed like off-road so you could be in four wheel low and set it to like three miles an hour and it'll just go three miles an hour which is actually kind of nice i've never used that before except for in utah in the brand new rangers i used it for the first time and it was actually really nice so that's all factory rear locker i'm just going to add a front locker and then the trimmer comes with the terrain mode so <coughs> terrain modes i'm almost out of gas out here is uh right here and it comes with normal and then grass, gravel, snow, so kind of slippery situations, and then mud and ruts, and then sand. So 
that's all gonna change the traction control. It's gonna change what four wheel drive mode you're in, high or low. It's gonna change throttle response, gear shift points, all that kind of stuff. So that's gonna be interesting driving off road for the first time with a bunch of like electronic nannies, but um, it can make a big difference in certain situations. I just put it to sand and throttle response, I think is deadened and traction control adjusts and it's a lot harder to get stuck. So kind of a cool little feature. It's nice that it's all built into the trimmer models. Um, why a Ranger and not another Tacoma? Well, I wanna try something new and old I'm, i have a tacoma i'm not like a diehard toyota fan like only can have toyota um i like all different brands and more of a vehicle guy I like find the right vehicle for what i want to use it for whichever checks the most boxes and these rangers kind of do that because they've been around for a while in the overseas market like since 2010 i think in the same basic frame and engine setup <clears throat> so they're very proven very tested um, they just got to the point now where, you know, like this is a 2021, it's only three years old, but I was able to find it on an insurance auction with 60,000 miles, but this is the Lariat. So highest trim level, um, it's the trimmer with the highest off-road package. And I got it for 11,700, which is about what you might pay for a 2001 first gen Tacoma with 200,000 miles on it. So this has a quarter of the miles and it's, 23 years newer and it's relatively the same price as most uh tacomas in california on the west coast so that combined with the fact that these come with the rear locker they come with a 10 speed transmission which means you don't have to re-gear the diffs when you go up to bigger tire size because the transmission can just handle it the modern engine uh horsepower output is 270 horsepower 310 torque with versus like my first in Tacoma, which is from the factory, I think 190 or 170 horsepower. And then I have the supercharger, which makes a huge difference. <clears throat> so it's probably in the mid 200s, but I also had to do supercharger and re-gear to accommodate the 33s where this from the factory is gonna do totally fine with 33s and get better gas mileage and uh, be able to cruise at higher speed just because it has that 10 speed versus a four speed with overdrive just makes a huge difference. So locker, transmission, more horsepower, and then that's not even tuned. You can tune these relatively easily with a plug-in tuner and get over 300 horsepower and well over 300 torque. So um, reliability, obviously it's not the 5VZ FE uh, reliability, but it's only has 60,000 miles on it versus buying one with 200,000 miles on it. I think we're probably going to be very similar, not have to worry about engine maintenance on this for quite a while. <clears throat> so, okay, off road, like just on this dirt road, I've driven this dirt road in my Tacoma a bunch, and obviously it's not apples to apples, but just the modern truck, I think just everything new, like all the bushings, the body mounts, the lower control arm mounts everything and then the newer shocks that are probably appropriately valved for this truck versus what's on my truck it just feels so much calmer off-road like less jittery the steering wheel has like almost zero feedback from all the bumps and it just feels a lot more comfortable and right now i just got back from the tire store and my tires are at like 45 psi so that's way too high for a road like this but so any bumps that there are, are already exaggerated but just overall it just feels so good on these fire roads, which is honestly a majority of like trails that I drive is gonna be fire roads and then something more technical at the end. But that's what I was looking for is just more comfort in my next car. And this one is definitely just more comfortable inside than the first gen Tacoma, just because it's a lot newer. The interiors of cars have just come so far. The materials, the touch points, everything, uh, just like a lot higher quality. So super happy with that aspect of the Ranger versus my Tacoma and makes me really excited because that was just one of the main things that I was trying to do was I love the way my Tacoma is set up. I love driving it. It's so fun off road. It's great on road trips, but it just gets a little fatiguing on road trips because it doesn't have quite the fuel range that would make it, um, like more comfortable. You can only go about 200 miles before you need to go fill up again because it has a small tank and um, it's louder inside and it's just not as fast because it's got a four speed even with the supercharger 
you know, you can go 80 miles an hour now, but you're burning even more gas. And uh, that's just something with the Ranger that I was really happy with is Long Range America offers a 37 gallon replacement tank for the factory tank. And <clears throat> that'll let me go like 600 miles, 500 or 600 miles. And that makes a big difference when you're going on like 800 mile road trips or something like that before you get to your destination. I will only have to get gas one time. And uh, personally, when I'm on road trips, I like being able to just get in the car and go and not having to stop if I don't feel tired. And a lot of times I can just kind of lock in and just drive for quite a while before I have to stop if it wasn't for gas. So <clears throat> that's another big thing about this platform is they offer that extended range fuel tank and just the transmission paired with the engine, paired with just the level of interior. It's just gonna be a really comfortable truck to drive on the road and um, yeah that's just one of the main things I'm really excited about for this I'm gonna take it out of two take it out of four-wheel drive back into two-wheel drive and um, get on the freeway one of the main things I was excited about was how it handled on the freeway versus like an older truck uh, if you do long road trips road trips get fatiguing but they are a lot less fatiguing in a car that's quiet has lots of power is comfortable and kind of has like those modern amenities and that's why I put a touch screen in my Tacoma and that's why I immediately put a large screen in the Ranger is it just makes road trips so much easier navigating cities you have CarPlay you have your music you have maps off-road all that kind of stuff but just in general the Ranger is a lot quieter and just the cabin is a lot more comfortable uh, for long road trips so that's something I'm really looking forward to uh, in this truck specifically because I do so many long freeway hauls before I hit any trails. And again, that's just my personal use case, but that's just kind of where I'm at with how I use the truck. And that's something I'm really excited about in the Ranger. It stopped raining like 10 minutes later and I just wanted to give you kind of a general overview of what I have planned for the truck. So as you might've guessed, yes, I'm gonna build a flatbed for it and a camper, but I'm gonna go for the flatbed first and get it set up working with the flatbed, do all the flatbed design, um, do rock sliders and just get the truck set up like that. Use my current camper on this truck if I need to do trips and I wanna try out this truck with the camper and then build a new camper, but take my time with it because I wanna do some new stuff on that camper. A Little bit larger interior, um, hard folding walls, kind of like a hiatus camper versus the tent fabric and just a couple other things that I learned from that camper that I want to bring over to the new one. So should be a lot of stuff to document and a lot of new videos on the channel throughout the year building this. Um, that's one thing I really want to try and do is document it a lot better than I did the last time I built the Tacoma. <clears throat> it was just too hard to think of all the stuff and build it and film it. But now I've got that one already built. I can use it as a design reference. I kind of know what I'm doing a little bit more and uh, I plan to do a lot more documenting of the build as it comes along. So yeah, if you guys are interested in that kind of stuff, um, subscribe and let's keep the channel growing and I'm excited to give you more updates on the Ranger as they happen. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.